Scientists are now in agreement about the fact that the fundamental law of the universe, the most basic principle of creation, is that of unity, wholeness, or oneness. But this is not a scientific discovery per se. It's nothing new. This principle is what our ancestors taught in ancient Egypt thousands of years ago before modern languages were even invented. It is the building block of the civilizations, the philosophies, the sciences, and the religions that man has known throughout the ages. So what does the law of unity say or mean? There is an absolute, eternal, infinite, self-existing, and unfathomable presence that generates, orchestrates, and delivers everything that is in existence. This primordial presence is the source from which all things emerge. It is the medium within which all things are contained. It is the matrix by which all things are entangled. It is the breath or the force by which all things live and move and have their being. And it is the summit to which all things return to again take a leap on the ever ascending and expanding spiral of life. This primordial presence expresses and experiences itself through an octagon of existence, eight planes of existence, which we may call the eight phases of God. The primordial presence is before all and after all. It is above all and below all. It is within all and without all. It is through all and as all. When we reflect on these eight phases of God, it becomes self-evident that everything that exists is not a being in itself, but the primordial presence having a personalized experience of itself. Therefore, we are spiritual beings encapsulated or embodied in a mind, soul, and body vehicle through which we are creating our experiences in a quantum universe. As spiritual beings, we are the individualization of the primordial presence. And as physical beings, we are the holographic images of the cosmos. Our dual nature of spirit and matter makes us a unique presence in all of creation. Our purpose in life is to bring into material expression the totality of the divine attributes that we may call the kingdom of heaven. By virtue of our spiritual nature, we are religious beings intrinsically. The religious experience simply means the subjective quest for the answers to the perennial questions of life. Who am I? Where do I come from? What am I doing here? What is my relationship with everyone else? And where am I going from here? Because man is a social animal, as the psychologists and sociologists call it, 
our individual subjective religious experiences are often interpreted within a religious framework that is created by the community in which we find ourselves. So by religious framework, we're talking about the institutionalized systems of creeds, dogmas, sacraments, ordinances, rituals, and systems of worship that develop within cultures and are built around a cultural perception of the primordial presence, which is often personified and given a unique name in each culture. So we should understand that God is not a name. It's just a generic noun for the primordial presence. Every culture has their experience of God and their personification of God. The, the religious experience, therefore, is intrinsically subjective. It's a personal subjective experience lived as part of a community as a religious communion. This first metaphysical law of the universe, the law of divine oneness, or the law of the primordial unity, how can you apply it in your life? You apply this law by incarnating it. There's no other way. You incarnate this law by becoming conscious of it. And you become conscious of it through, one, studying spiritual literature. Two, meditating on the reality of your identity as one with this eternal oneness. And three, contemplating the wonders of nature within which the secrets of life are embedded. Again, this practice of your consciousness, of your oneness with the divine, goes by many names in different cultures. So whether you call it a Christ consciousness, whether you call it salvation, whether you call it illumination, whether you call it being born again, it does not matter what you call it. What matters is that you should become it. And the surest way to become it is to follow the path that is best suited for you. I am Godfrey Eso. Thank you for watching. Thank you for undertaking this journey of self-transformation. I urge you to put this law into practice and share it with the world so that together we can inspire the spiritual evolution of humanity.